This is the Honda CBR900RR Fireblade, the last model to have been designed by the legendary Tadao Baba, the man who invented the immortal Fireblade legend and this is claimed to be one of the most sought after Fireblade models ever packing in all the excitement, all the power and poise and getting an opportunity to ride this legendary machine was kind of a dream come true for me. Raw power, pure motorcycling, fun with no electronic aids, no limitations, no strings attached. This is sheer super sport magic at its very best where the rider's skill determines how well he can tame the machine rather than the machine taming the rider. My date with the Fireblade, if I were to share the experience in a sentence, I would say being baptized by fire. That's exactly how it feels. The Fireblade legend or the CBR900RR was first introduced back in 1992 wherein CBR stands for Cross Beam Racer as confirmed by Honda's top official Mr. Dan Hancock. Back then it came powered by an 893cc inline 4. The first gen 900RR was based on the CBR750RR wherein Honda increased the stroke of the inline 4 750cc engine thereby raising the displacement to 893cc. But the best part about this bike was its power to weight ratio. Weighing in at a mere 185 kgs dry, the first gen CBR900RR was one of the lightest motorcycles of its era. Then as the years moved on, the bike kept evolving and becoming better and better until this model was introduced in 2002. The cylinder bore was enlarged from 74 to 75 mm, thereby increasing the capacity to 954 cc. Now further enhancing the overall performance on board were larger fuel injectors, larger radiator, remapped electronic fuel injection and a more powerful ECU. The restyled bodywork also looked sleeker and sharper and was well ahead of its time, so much so that the bike still looks super hot even to this very day. The frame and the swing arm were further strengthened and the foot pegs were raised to provide for sharper lean angles. We got larger 330mm dual front discs and the overall dry weight was further reduced to a mere 168kg which was outstanding. Talking about the engine specs, powering this bike is a 954cc inline 4 engine with a DOHC setup that puts out a max power of 154 bhp at 11,250rpm and a max torque of 101 Nm at 9,000 rpm. We get a 6 speed gearbox. Taking the bike out for a spin, what seriously impressed me immediately was the condition in which this bike has been maintained. Kudos to my friend Anthony for retaining all the glorious performance of this bike in its most pristine manner which is next to impossible. I wonder how he managed to maintain this beautiful bike in such an immaculate condition for such a long time. The engine is ultra refined which is a hallmark trait of every Honda but what was really interesting was the way the bike responded to throttle inputs. The bike responds like a brand new bike with really intense acceleration, great control and superb handling. Mind you, the bike is nearly 15 years old. Now this speaks about the amazing build quality and reliability that Honda is known for delivering with each and every motorcycle of theirs. No squeaks, no leaks, no fails. The ride was smooth and hassle-free and I thoroughly enjoyed freely revving the bike. And for a bike that has no ABS, it stops pretty quickly without any stuttering or uncertainty. The brakes are absolutely brilliant on this bike. And just for the record, we get dual 330mm discs up front and a single 220mm disc at the back. The suspension is again very well tuned. We get 43mm inverted forks up front with preload compression and rebound adjustment. At the back we get a ProLink gas charged HMAS damper with 13 step adjustability for preload compression and rebound damping. The suspension is ideally damped, it isn't too soft nor is it too rigid. 
It does offer superb stability at higher speeds and great confidence while cornering. And of course, we have the twin spar aluminium frame with a pivotless swing arm design that serves as the perfect foundation to lend this bike brilliant handling characteristics. The seat height is 815 mm, again, somewhat manageable for average height riders like me. Talking about the tires, we get 17 inch wheels with a 120 by 70 tire up front and a 190 by 50 tire at the back. The road grip is quite awesome as well. And what an experience it was reincarnating the legend back to life and getting to spend an evening with one of the fastest and most intense machines in the history of motorcycling. The Fireblade is a legend that will live on forever. And what makes a legend is not just leading the way during their era, but making an impact so powerful that the generations to come will always look up to them forever. So this concludes my tribute to the iconic Fireblade. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. Until next time, this is Dino saying ciao. Take care, God bless and ride safe.